In this video, we're gonna go through the features of Nginx Boost 50, the remap for Tesla Model 3 long range and standard range. Let's get into it. So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? So here is the app once again, extend the power. And there are all the features there. I think I've gone through them a couple of times, but we'll actually deep dive into these now. What I'm gonna start with is something that I know isn't working because I tested it last time, which is, and I'm gonna try it again, which is the battery heating. So I'm gonna press that now and show you that the temperature of the heating system is, or the battery rather, is max temp is 17.3 degrees. I'm going to test it one more time. However, I gave that feedback to Nginx and they did come back to me really quickly and they said that I need to update the modules. And what that basically means is I've got to take the modules out again and I've got to connect them to a computer with a USB cable, which they supplied with the kit. If you look at back at part one and I need to do that. I'm going to do that in another video. I'm going to focus on the features today. Again, it just goes to show that Obviously, if it was a Tesla upgrade, convenience, it's so, so convenient. And that's what Teslas are. As, as people know, if owned a Tesla, you compare it to another EV, you know, convenience is absolute king, whether it's the charging, the, uh, the uh, technology, the software, it's great. And this is a little bit of a bugbear of mine of the Nginx Boost 50. I mean, it isn't officially Tesla, so you're obviously gonna have to uh, jump for a few hoops. And it's understanding in this series of videos whether it is worth it to you. You know, it's gonna be different for everyone, but is it gonna be worth it to you to benefit from not only the performance boost that you get, from the acceleration boost and the boost 50 but also the features and that's what these series of videos are here to understand we're going to go through the regen control and i did some filming last time where the sound was okay thankfully and we'll go through that video in a second showing you how the regen works but let me just show you so uh, i've just done the tab and it's come up with this disclaimer attention the regen control is designed to be used on a closed circuit tracks it requires the driver to drive carefully and make sure not to endanger other road users nginx is not responsible for any damage caused by the use of this mode by pressing except you release nginx from all reliability well we're in this far except so when you do that you then get an option of your regen control which I was especially excited about is the fact that on a Tesla normally you only get an option of normal regen and less regen. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the video from last week where I was playing around between the 100 and 0% and it really does work, which is great. Let's go and try it out. So I've put the regen to zero. Now normally if you do that, as Tesla drivers will know, it will come up with the symbol once you've got up to 100% that the the regen isn't working. So let's go give it a go. I'm really interested to know, first of all, whether it's gonna work, but also whether the increasing the regen is gonna be quite nice. So let's give it a go, right? So accelerate. Okay, that works. <laughs> there is no braking. Uh, quick, I've gotta use the brake. I hate not having regen. Let's give it 80 to remind myself of what I normally drive with, and then we'll give it 100%. Yep, okay, that feels normal. Right, let's, let's change it to 100%. Yeah, that's definitely stronger. So I've put the regen back to zero. So okay, let's, okay, now no regen. Okay, so good, because what I found with the, when I had a quick play around with the drift mode, to take it back out of drift mode, you have to be back in park, which isn't ideal. Let's put it back on 80. Okay, so this is a 70 mile an hour dual carriageway here. So I'm gonna accelerate up to 70. Yep, the boost is still working. And okay, just yeah, nice regen. So let's put, put that up to 100, up to 70. Yeah, there's definitely more there. You know, what's the benefits of having adjustable regen control i mean you wouldn't want to have it on your phone like i'm doing now because obviously that would hang on a minute right put my phone over here 
So, so obviously you'd want to set it. So if you're going on an efficiency run, you would want to put it down to zero. Yeah, if you want to absolutely max every inch of efficiency out of it, obviously you've got to be really careful to make sure that you're looking ahead to see what's happening. Or if you just want to try and get as much power back into the battery, maybe the 100 regen would be better. So why don't Tesla let you do 100 regen? Yeah, it's definitely more, definitely more. So why not 100 regen? I don't know if it's, <laughs> there's someone waving their hand in a Mondeo. It's never a good sign because they're missing a hubcap. So I don't know whether that is something to help save the motor or the regen controller or something. <laughs> um, I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna get back to base. Now, am I actually gonna be using that regen control? Yes, I probably would use it if I was taking it on track or if I was doing a efficiency run. Like I said in the video, I'm not sure if putting it to 100% regen would harm any of the components of the Tesla. Um, so if anyone's got any comments on that, I'd love to hear them. So whack them in the comments. I'm just going to leave it in standard and chances are I'm not really going to use it that often. But it's nice to know that I can adjust it if I want to. So yeah, again, I think it is a good feature. So let's move on to the next feature on the app. So as you can tell, the battery pack heating is still on. It's been on for the last you know, five minutes and it's not changed the battery temperatures at all. Like I said, I'm going to have to do the update on the module. So I'm going to have to get back in underneath the, uh, the glove box and take that out. But let's go to another mode. So we'll leave the drift mode and real drive mode uh, till later. Off-road mode. I mean, I don't know what the off-road mode does, uh, so let's accept and see what it says. But again, it says, you know, not designed for the road, etc. So I'll accept that. I don't know what it does. So what I'll do is I'll read and put a description in now. Now I know on the market you can get lift kits for the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. So, and well that sounds like a lot of fun. The features, being able to play around with the car with these different features and boost 50 Nginx app is uh, modules is pretty cool. One thing you'll know is uh, the off-road mode is off now. I've put it in drive and park and it's still showing off-road up there so I'll probably have to come away from the car lock it unlock it come back in again and that's exactly the same as what you've got to do with drift mode uh, and real drive mode one or the other or both uh, talking about the allow update you have to press the allow update if you want to update the Tesla because if you don't then you risk Tesla finding out about the boost 50 you can void your warranty if you still got warranty and again, I don't know if there's any other repercussions uh, for Tesla finding out that you've been playing around with the VCU. Uh, I'd rather not find out. So I wait to see when there is an update. And to do that, you go on to, I'll show you now, onto the Nginx website and you find your particular model and it will tell you the code of which update is safe to do. So at the moment, because I've had the app off for a while because I've not been able to swipe across and do that allow update. My test has not been updated for probably a good couple of months. So I'm really looking forward to update the car when I can. But unfortunately, we're at a point now where Nginx look like they're a little bit behind on the update because it only recently came out. So I'm going to have to wait until Nginx to double check. It's not going to affect the functionality of Nginx Boost 50 and then I'll update the car. So again, bit of a rigmarole. However, needs must if you want to play around with the features. Let's move on to the next feature. So, short wiper logic. Right, well, I'm back in the car after working out um, how to get the short wipe to work. So what you do is you put away from you to do the auto high beam, and then you use the miss button, which is the screen wash button. You tap it once, twice, three times, four times to get different uh, speeds of the wipers. I've tried it not got it to work i mean as anybody will know if they've got a tesla the wipers are probably the least the, the worst feature they like in, from a functionality point of view they're not great are they so i'll be really interested to see how that can improve the wipers right let's play around with the automatic doors 
So yeah, we assume that this is a beta code for the auto opening door. And what they're saying is the door could open in intentional conditions, which cause damage by pressing accept, you release reliability from Nginx. So we've done that. Now this is quite cool because it gives you quite a lot of functionality here when you do the auto doors. You can play around with how close you are to the, to the doors. Uh, you can turn on and off the front or trunk, bear in mind, my model's an old school one, so it hasn't got any uh, auto opening. Mine's rally spec. Now, I played around with this before and it didn't work. And apparently after uh, contacting Nginx, they did say that you've got to have sentry mode on. So let me put sentry mode on. Let me get out of the car and let's see if it works. So I'm walking up to the door. I've done it 100% close and nothing's happening. Sentry mode's on, like they said, for me to do, it's not working. I know it's in beta mode, but still I'm walking up to the door and nothing is happening. Oh dear. I'll get back in contact with them and find out what their thoughts are on that. It might be down to the update, so we'll see. Uh, there are actually a couple of other things on that um, feature, which I'll show you now. Obviously, it's not a feature till it works, let's be honest. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you can change how close from a percentage, how close or how far away, trunk and trunk. And also maximum delay on trunk and front openings, maximum number of trunk front opening, uh, sorry, opening after phone key detected in minutes, opening event possible after phone key detected and phone key loss of sight threshold. So let's move on. So we've got ambient light here. I don't think... I didn't really get it to work, but it's going to be quite tricky because obviously it's quite, although a horrible day today, uh, I'm not going to get that working. So I'll try that in the night time, see if I can get that working. It doesn't work. Heated steering wheel, my car hasn't got it. Uh, heated seats, my car's got all of them. Hard reset. Now I've not played around with that yet, but apparently when I contacted Nginx to tell them that my uh, auto opening doors weren't working they said that I need to update my modules for the hard reset as well I'm not you know other than resetting the vehicle which I'm not sure what benefit that is so I don't think there's any point playing around with that if it needs up if they've already told me it needs updating so let's move on to the last three that are relevant heated battery pack heating it's yep yeah, it's definitely not working still temperature the same so I might as well just turn that off um, we've got no TM TPMS alert. Now, I think that's going to be quite useful. I'm going to accept that. I've not played around with this. So I'm going to accept that. And it doesn't give us any extra functionality. So if you've got wheels without TPMS uh, sensors, then that could be very, very useful to a lot of people uh, if they want to run a particular type of wheel, tire, what have you. So, yeah, uh, again, useful feature. If it works, though, let me show you what this car does for drift mode and rear-wheel drive mode. When you put it into rear-wheel drive mode, it does the normal attention, yes, of course, you know, accept. And then, when, there we go. So, front motor disabled, power reduced, drive with caution. I had a little play around with this uh, last week, and yes, the power is reduced, but if you just do the rear-wheel drive mode, it's still got the traction control on. If you want just rear-wheel drive, rear motor, and taking the traction control off, you have to also press the drift mode. We'll put the drift mode on now. Disclaimer. Yes. So if I press my brake again, let's see how many other lights come up. Let's put it in drive. Auto steer, temporarily unavailable. Oh, actually, let's just put it in park first. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the, automatically it's, you know that symbol is for no regen braking, although it didn't come up when we did the regen control, but that's what comes up. The traction control light has uh, come on as well. And, oh, what's this? It's gonna tell us. So lane de departure avoidance features unavailable, automatic ve vehicle hold dis disabled, automatic emergency braking is unavailable, stability control disabled, traction control disabled, front, front motor disabled as well. Sounds like a lot of fun to me. However, like I said, there is a lack, oh, there's no hold either. <laughs> um, 
there is a bit of a lack of uh, there's quite a big lack of power without the uh, without the front motor as well. However, when you just put it into drift mode, it does have a lot of power and it does use the front motor. And I spoke to a friend of mine, Clive, who's been in a couple of videos before. He's got a very exciting Tesla Model 3. That um, apparently the drift mode on the performance, when you put it into track mode, it does still use some of its front motor. Yeah, I think what we need to do, the next video, um, other than the one that I'm going to show you how to update the modules, because I think that's going to be fun in itself, showing people how to do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to get a spare set of wheels and we're going to take it drifting. We have to take it drifting, but we have to do it somewhere safe, as I've mentioned before, because we can't lose license, get car crushed, etc. You know, it hasn't got a BMW badge on it after all. No offense. There, there are some great features here. However, we just need to get them all working. So I'm going to work very closely with Nginx and we should, after the next couple of episodes, have a good conclusion whether it is worth the money. But just as a bit of a helping hand, and this is not sponsored by Nginx, this video, but there is a Black Friday deal this Friday because this video is coming out Wednesday. In a couple of days, they have got Black Friday deal where it's, I think, even 10% more discount than what I bought mine for. So if you are interested in these kind of features, you don't care about, you know, potential warranty issues and all the rigmarole of, you know, not having the software update straight away, waiting for Nginx to check it and all these things, I would suggest now is the time. Thanks for watching this video. Like I said, next week uh, or the following, because there's a few other things going on. I want to have a bit of a mix up of content, not just on the remap, uh, Rusty. Um, we will go into finding out why other things are going wrong and hopefully Nginx can help support that. See you next time.